All right, what's going on everybody? Rob here, Trev2323, TREV2323. This is gonna be part three or part four of the video, I'm not sure. I put the concrete in and you've seen me adjust the motor and put the electric on the motor right here. Here's the motor, I couldn't ask for a better fit on where I put the J-bolts. And if you're following the series, you'll see how I made that for the J-bolts. Now, if this is uneven, if this is uneven right here, all you do is you put washers underneath here to even it out but i really don't think that's going to matter it was pretty cool you know i'm a youtuber just like you're a youtuber we cross reference i've seen somebody actually hang these upside down with two different gates that was pretty awesome now so far right now what i we, what we've been doing since there's no motor to lock the gate we've been putting a lock on it but as you see it has to go upside down in order for us to make it easier so i'm going to unlock it right now because the motor is not solidly in place right now what i'm going to do is open the gate as much as possible so i could affix the first thing that here that's going to grab onto the chain one of the things that concern me is they send two clips two clips for the uh to hook the chains onto both ends of the fences and that's fine and dandy, but the chains come in 10 foot sections. So I'm hoping in the bag, there's something to connect the 10 foot sections together. I did measure the inner length of our fence is 20 feet exactly. Now here was my theory on the motor, because they say that if you're gonna, this motor is set to open clockwise, is what it said the motor was set to open clockwise. So that'll pull the gate open. But now your first click was supposed to be opening on the gate. And when I did the first click, it opened counterclockwise. So my theory was with the magnets, because you have to have one higher and one lower, and that's how it knows the open and close. So if you reverse the magnets, it'll be reversed on the motor and you don't have to change any wiring. Here's why you may have to change the wiring and what we're going to find out is these things have an automatic close in five seconds close in 10 seconds close in 15 seconds close in 30 seconds but you could disable that so before i pull a car out anything we're gonna let this damn thing sit for a minute to see if it tries to go either or the other way and if it does then we're gonna have to reverse the polarity okay now here's where you have a little bit of play you put the u-bolts on or the square bolts if you have a square post but this is so a uh, circle so use the u-bolts now this right here i have with the L going towards the inside of the fence, or you could flip it for the L coming to the outside of the fence. So it gives you a little play. And why I have mine with the L going to the inside of the fence is because I don't want this to stick out further over here and chance scratching the car or anything like that. So if the chain is too long, what I would then do was flip this to the outside and then cut this off wherever I needed to cut it off. So I'm gonna tighten this one down and put the other one on the other side of the fence. Before I tighten it down, let me tell you this, I'm gonna eyeball it with the motor back there. Here's the motor back there. I'm gonna eyeball this to be even with the motor. All right, smarter than the average bear here. So I have this one bolted on. So what I'm gonna do is measure from the inside of the pipe right here to the bottom of this right here. And then this way I know measure that to that so I know on the other end I have the exact same measurement and the exact same height okay now when you're tightening these down kind of rotate them around because this right here will start to twist in or out like this now as you see I did the opposite on this side right here but this side right here is not going to scratch or hit anything and uh, I'm going to measure the nine and five eighths from the bottom of the pole to here so no those are exactly straight and almost level with the motor right there. Uh, one thing I am concerned about is like I said, as I put the chain on there are two 10 foot lengths, I'm hoping they got the piece in the middle. Uh, you gotta run the chain from here over the motor and to the other piece. But right now I'm just gonna run the chain straight across to make sure that I could get it to fit. Then I'm gonna put the motor on, plug it in, and make sure it's going to the proper open direction before I put the chain on the motor because once you put the chain on the motor it's gonna lock it open or closed so before I have it locked open or closed I want to see which way it's going first now if you remember in the other video I told you I didn't tighten these all the way down yet because you have a lot of room to slide it back and forth 
Now with this right here, I measured this was four, right here was four inches right here is what I measured on mine. But I have to slide these all the way to the front for it to be even. Now I could actually go ahead to measure the distance between this, the gear and this, and the gear and over there, or the uh, chain and over there. And it'll give me a more true, but one thing they give you the adjustments right here, okay? And then on over here, they give you another adjustment right here. And if worse comes to worse, what you would have to do is cut into right here and use bigger washers. So let me get this chain together. Okay, here was one of my concern. They give you two clips to clip the chain onto both ends, that end and that end. And I was worried that you wouldn't have a clip to put these two together, but it is in the bag right here. So that's what the clip your chains together to give you 20 feet. Now you think, what if I don't have 20 feet of space in between there? As long as you got enough chain to get, uh, say, uh, two feet or a foot and a half past the motor to your chain, what I would do is I would bolt the other piece to right here or you know to a pole that is just outside of the motor and also if you want to measure it out you could actually move the motor closer or to or I could have moved the motor motor closer to the pole but I felt that that was the halfway point here's the clips to clip this right here to the end piece over there all right so you put your end piece through there and this is just a little clip that with some pliers you clip on the right here and that'll hold that now all right now on this one actually on the ends both ends came with clips so you gotta take both clips off because you only need one of them so you put that little one on right here and then you put the lock on right here i did what i didn't want to do i dropped the chain in the dirt so now i gotta clean the chain off the easiest way i find to get these on is put your pliers on the back side of this and clip just the top of this and squeeze this and this with your pliers to pop them in place. All right, before I run the chain through and tighten it, it gotta go over, under, and over. All right, or is it under, over, and under? Oh, yeah, it's under, over, and under. Okay, so I wanna make sure this gotta go clockwise to open the gate. So that's counterclockwise, so it's closing the gate. Now that's opening the gate right there. Okay, so that's opening the gate. So when I put this fence on, it has to be completely closed now when everything is tightened up. It has to be completely closed when I run this chain here. Okay, I have the chain on. In the beginning, I put this one on wrong. So I had to come back because I had this clip right here on this side. So I had to come back and fix that. Now the chain is not tight yet. What I am going to do right now is tighten the motor down. I know it's exactly where it needs to be now. The chain's running through it. It's set to open up next. But here's my one thing that I'm kind of troubleshooting. When I tighten the chain up, I don't want it to pull the chain this way more. You know what I mean? I don't want I want it to be closed. I want it to be all the way closed. Well, I guess it's going to go on where the you hit the button to stop it also, or the mag magnets are going to be at. So for right now, I'm tightening all this that is ready to be tightened down before I tighten up the chain. Okay, so I locked the motor in place now. Now I gotta start snugging up the chain. So when you snug up the chain, you actually want it to try to be like a straight line right here to be a straight line to where that gearbox is right there. I'm thinking about actually putting a jack stand in the middle to bring it up some to make it easier to tighten it up with jack or a jack stand. But that's right there to take some of the tension off the chain when I'm tightening it up. Okay, so here's where I am right now. This side has zero slack. This side still has some slack. Now mind you, this is a 20 foot chain. I have all the bolts tightened all the way back. So this one right here is actually gonna have to be flipped the other way. So this is on the 20 foot inner. I think I get more slack out if I flip that the other way so but you know me I'm like a little kid in the candy store so the chains on everything's tight
Okay, so I do want more slack on this side right here, so I'm going to open it up. I'm on the outside. I'm just going to leave just enough room for I can stand in between here so I can have more slack on this side. Okay, right now I actually loosened, opened up the thing 90 degrees so this could be loose. And I actually had to loosen that one up all the way to get me enough slack so I could fix this one and tighten this one straight the opposite way. So with that loosened up now, it gives me options where I could tighten both of them up side to side. This is my first time, probably only time doing this, so I'm taking you through everything I'm going through. Okay, I did measure the 9 and 5 eighths right here. So where I'm going to start tightening is on the other side, because like I said, the original reason why I didn't put this is because I don't want this sticking out too far. So I'm going to start on the other side, tighten it up first to get this chain tight. I still have these on the jack stand. So I'm going to go out and let's see. Well, you know what? If I put it more this way, more slack will be on that side. So I want more slack on the side I want to be tightening first. This is my theory at least. All right, now I got to go on the other side and start tightening it up. I'm going to get a ratchet eventually, but I'm going to see how much I can tighten up by hand. And this right here, I start tightening this up all right here. That's all the space I got to tighten it up. To make it faster, I'm going with a deep socket. And I'm going to hold this by hand to make it faster. And then you tighten this up with the pliers this way and this this way, and that'll lock the bolt. Okay, one good thing is either in the closed and open position it didn't automatically start to do the opposite so that shows that the automatic ain't on i tightened the crap out of the chain with a 13 millimeter socket so it should be pretty snug in there i gotta remember to stop it i don't got the magnets on yet see no Here's one thing, all right. I stopped it right here without the magnets, so there's distance right there. So that's why you need the magnets to stop at the proper thing all the time. Now here's another thing I want you to know. Remember I made this piece smaller than what it should be? I gotta really, really, really wet it down because look at this. The concrete jiggles when the motor starts now is tighten up these ends because that part is done right here tighten up these ends and find out which magnets I'm actually using for the stop open and stop closed okay the next step is gonna be adding the limit switches and then I'll be done with this five-part series